Today we have a quick tutorial where you can learn how to create this glitch effect really fast that can be applied to any existing scene, object, text, or anything else in any Blender project. It's really simple and requires nothing more than just the default cube. So let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, we're gonna go ahead and rename the cube to glitch object and then hide it for the time being. Then we'll press Shift A and search for a text object and rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees because we need some object to be glitched in or out and I'm gonna use a text for this tutorial. Then I'll go to the text properties, change the alignment under the paragraph to center and middle. After after which I'll expand the font properties and just choose a font. Then I can press tab to go into edit mode and just type in whatever text I want. I'm going to go with glitch and then you can tab back out to just have your text. Then you can give it a base material by going to the material properties, pressing this new button to add in a new material and then going down to the emission and making this all the way to white. Of course, you don't require this, but I'm just doing this to set up the scene. I'll switch my viewport shading to render, increase the emission strength to something like 10 so that the white becomes a complete white. And then in my render properties, I'm going to go to the screen space reflections, check it and also expand it and switch on refraction. With that, we can start with the material for the glitch object. So let's just unhide the glitch object and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change it from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. In the shader editor, if we select our glitch object, we should have the default material already present because this is the default cube, but we'll rename it from material to glitch. Then we'll select the principal to BSDF and tap X to delete it. And we'll press shift A and search for a glass shader. Now we can connect the glass shader into the material output. And to actually make it look like glass, we have to go to the actual material properties, change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend, and also uncheck show backface. After that, we have to switch on screen space refractions. And under the shadow mode, we can change this from opaque to none. That way we actually have glass and you can see this glitch text being refracted through the glass. Now, before we actually start the glitch effect, something that's worth noting is that this is not really how glass works in the real world. In the real world, the IOR or the index of refraction has a different value for different wavelengths of light, which means different colors refract by a different amount. So the way we mimic that in Blender is by pressing Shift A and searching for an add shader and just plugging that in over here and adding in three different glass BSDFs. To add in three of them, we need two add shaders. So we'll press Shift D and plug it in over here and then take this glass BSDF and press Shift D to duplicate it and then press Shift D again and then just connect this one to the second shader of the first add shader and this last glass shader to the second shader of the second add shader. By doing this, we should have our basic glass shader itself. But to actually make this into the realistic effect that we wanted, we can go ahead and change these colors from white to three different colors. And remember, if you add in red plus blue plus green, you get white. So let's change this first one to red and we'll change the second one to green and we'll change the third one to blue. So by adding in R, G and B, we should get the exact same glass that we had right at the start with no changes. However, what we'll now do is change the IOR for each of these. So red has the least IOR. So we'll make this maybe 1.4 and instantly you can see how there's a bit of dispersion occurring. We'll keep the green at 1.45 and the blue will change to 1.5. And that way you just get this separation of colors, which makes this look a lot more like realistic glass although this effect right now is a bit too strong. But by playing around with this, you can get much more realistic glass in Blender as well. However, now we're going to actually manipulate this to create our glitch effect. What we're going to do is press Shift A and search for a value node, which is going to be the IOR. So let's name this 1.45, but we're going to subtract some value and plug it into the IOR for the red and add some value and plug it into the IOR for the blue. So let's press Shift A and search for a math node and then press Shift D to duplicate it. We'll change this top one from add to subtract and we'll plug this value into the first socket of both the math nodes that we have. And then we'll plug this into the IOR of the glass BSDF with the color of green. We can plug this into the IOR of the red glass BSDF and we can plug this value into the IOR of the blue glass BSDF. Now you see that dispersion that we were seeing last time has been increased by quite a lot because previously we were just subtracting 0.05 and adding 0.05 and now we're subtracting 0.5 and adding 0.5. But we can make this much better. To convert this into the glitch effect, instead of just plugging in constant values here, we can use a noise texture to take care of that. Let's search for a noise texture and then press Shift A and search for a math node. And because the noise texture goes from zero to one, we can change this from add to multiply and take this factor, plug it into the first socket and multiply it by a large number so that we get numbers even greater than one. Let's change this to something like three and then 
plug this value into both the value of the subtract node as well as the value of the add node. So now you can already see how the glitch is changing, but we get most of it to be blue. And that's because the noise texture goes from a value of zero to one and it's centered around 0 0.5. We need it to be centered around zero. So we have to search for another math node and this time change it from add to subtract and then subtract a value of 0 0.5. That way the noise texture gets centered around zero. And so we get both ends of the spectrum and now you get bluish areas, yellowish areas and all of that. Next, we can change this from 3D to 4D so that we have control over the W and we can actually change this over time. So that is essentially going to be our glitch effect. So what you can do is just add in a driver for every frame by pressing hash frame and that way every frame the W value changes and you get the glitch effect just like this. You can take this glass cube and actually scale it down on the Y axis because we don't need it to be this fat and then you can just press SX to scale it up so that the entire text is covered and that's actually it for the glitch effect. Now if you actually look at it we have the text present within the glass cube but that is not necessary. We can have the glass cube present in front of the text and as long as we're viewing it through the glass like this you'll see that we still get the glitch effect. So that way no matter what your scene is as long as you just have this glass block present in front of your camera, the entire scene will have this glitch effect added in. To animate the glitch effect coming in and out, what you can do is first place your camera by searching for the camera or selecting it and pressing Alt G, Alt R, followed by RX 90 and then GY and bringing it back zero to go into your camera view. And it works best if your camera view has lower focal lengths and hence a wider field of view. But again, it works just as well even without really large focal lengths. Then let's say you don't want any glitch effect for the first second. So if we have a frame rate of 30 frames per second, on frame 31, you can just press I and add in a keyframe for the scale. And then on frame 30, because till frame 30, you don't want the glitch effect, you can just press S0 and then I scale. By doing that, you have no glitch effect for the first second and then suddenly there's a glitch. And let's say the glitch stays for half a second. So till frame 45, you can again tap I scale. And then on frame 46, you can press S0 and then I scale. So that way, when you actually play the animation, you have no glitch, suddenly a glitch and no glitch again. So that's actually all there is to creating this glitch effect. If you want to actually enhance this even further, there's a few things that you can do. The first thing is increasing the scale on the noise texture actually causes there to be much finer details. So it looks much more random when the W changes, which makes it look like more of a glitch. Apart from that, if you don't want it to be blocky like this and you want them to be stretched out, you can always press Control T with the node angular enabled to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And then you can switch from generated to object after which on the scale nodes, you can play around with the Z value and things like that, and also reduce it to maybe 0.2 on the X and the Y to just make the glitch effect far more stretched out. And this is what it looks like now. So again, it's up to you. And this is how you can get it. If you want to change the colors, you can always change the colors of the glass PSDF. Although if you change one of them, you have to make sure that you change the other ones as well, such that the sum of all three of them become white once again. So as long as you follow that triad colors, you will get it to become white and you get the glitch effect just like that. Apart from that, there's one last thing that you could do, which is actually adding in some sort of distortion to this cube. The way I find adding distortion to the cube easiest is by switching over to the geometry node editor, pressing this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, and then pressing shift A and searching for a subdivide mesh node. Then you can plug this right after the group input. And if you go to your wireframe view, you can see the number of subdivisions that you have. Let's just increase it to something like this and then move each of these points randomly by searching for a set position node as well as a noise texture. So then you can take this noise texture color and plug it into the offset. But just like last time, because the noise texture is centered around 0.5, we have to search for a vector math node so that we can control the range of values and change it from add to subtract and just subtract a value of 0.5 on all of the axes. And then we want to also be able to control by how much it moves. So press shift A and search for another vector math node, but this time change it from subtract to scale, plug the vector into the first socket and take this output and plug it into the offset of the set position. Then you can change this from 3D to 4D. And again, just search for a scene time node, take the frames and plug it into the W so that even that changes over time. So when you do this and you actually switch back to your rendered view, you can see what type of a glitch effect you get. And I think that just looks super cool. So the best part about this is that again, you could just make sure that this cube that you're adding is present just in front of the camera and the entire scene behind you will have the same glitch effect added into it. But remember the objects that are further away from this glass cube will have more lateral displacement. So that's why you can see the word glitch is fairly small, but when it actually goes through the glitch effect, it becomes much larger or it feels much larger. If you were to take this glass cube and actually scale it down on the Y axis and press control A and just apply 
kind of scale so that the geometry nodes works just as well. You can slightly reduce the amount of lateral displacement that occurs. But if you want to reduce it even more, just make sure that you have the glass placed as close as possible to the actual text that you have or object that you want to be glitched. So if you do that, you just have much lesser amount of glitch. And because of that, you can also have this just animate on the Y axis so that you go from a position that's close to the object and has less glitch to a place further away and more glitch. And even that can be animated to control the amount of glitch that's occurring. But essentially that is the glitch effect. And if you're happy with it, you can go ahead and press render animation. So if you want to see how to use this glitch object in other scenes, you can just select it, press control C to copy the glitch object or you can mark it as an asset and use it in any other video you want. You can check out this video to find out more about the asset library and how to use it. But once you've copied it, you can go to any other scene that you've already created. For example, I had created this particular video just the other day and you can check out the tutorial over here. But if you want to add in the glitch effect to this particular scene, all you have to do is go to a frame or wherever you want to be and just press control V to paste in that glitch object. So now you can see where the glitch object is currently present, but I want it to be present near the camera. So I'll press GY and move it more towards the camera. And then when I press zero, I just have to scale it up by pressing S and just dragging it till the entire camera view is covered. Once I have the entire camera view covered, again, I can press control A and just apply the scale. And then that's actually all there is to it. The glitch is going to happen and it's going to go away according to the keyframes that you had set before. If you want it to happen longer, you can select these keyframes by pressing B and just selecting them and then pressing G to grab it and just move it. And that way the glitch stays for longer. If you want the glitch to happen at a different time, you can box select all of them and just grab it to whichever area on the timeline you want the glitch effect to happen. And that way the glitch effect will happen at that particular time. So that's how you can apply this to any video or any animation that you already have. And you can create really stunning, cool animations. I really hope this video was helpful. And I really liked the glitch effect that came out from this tutorial. If you find a cooler application of this, definitely let me know and be sure to link your videos so that I can watch them as well. You can always send in messages or videos on Instagram at the I am studios. And until you do that, check out other videos on my channel because I post a video every single day. So there's definitely something or the other worth checking out until the next video comes out tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and stay creative.